Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon, and for that I'm joined on the line by Dr. Kim Sewan, Professor of Economics at Ihua Women's University. Professor Kim, good afternoon. Thank you for making time today. Good afternoon, Devin. Well, as we heard a minute ago, Korea's biggest company, Samsung Electronics, is reporting record high sales for last year at about 280 trillion won. That's about 230 billion dollars. The pandemic's seen strong chip sales for the company, and LG Electronics, meanwhile, overtook its main U.S. rival Whirlpool last year in sales of its home appliances to take the global number one spot for the first time. Tell us about last year's performance by these two Korean tech giants. Uh, Korean two major electronics companies, Samsung and LG, are advancing in global market over pandemic. Uh, this is something unexpected because coronavirus pandemic ha was supposed to give negative shock to the businesses of the two companies. Uh, Samsung Electronics reported strong 2021 year sales and earnings on robust chip business and brief sales of consumer electronics. The company's total yearly sales came at, came at a record high about 280 trillion won, up 18 percent on year, uh, while operating profit was uh, about 52 trillion won, up 43 percent on year. Particularly last year, uh, the company's chief business reported more than uh, 94 trillion won in revenue, surpassing Intel by sales. On the other hand, LG Electronics, the second largest electronics company in Korea, uh, total sales came to about 76 trillion won uh, last year, up 21 percent on year. Uh, uh, it is highly expected that uh, at the same time, LG Electronics home appliances sales in the United States exceeded that of Whirlpool, the largest home appliance manufacturer from the United States. Well, now, shifting gears here, looming over everything this week, of course, is the Federal Reserve adding to expectations that an interest rate hike is coming this March. Rates are still near zero, but inflation's at historic highs. Tapering, the Fed says, will go ahead as planned. What came out of the Fed's meeting this week, and what do you make of it? U.S. Federal Reserve did not uh, raise its key interest rate in January FM, FOMC meeting this week. But it did signal it would begin steadily uh, raising interest rate in mid-March, which is the latest step toward removing stimulus to bring down inflation. Uh, since U.S. inflation soared uh, last year by the most in, in nearly four decades by 7 percent on year, uh, stabilizing inflation uh, became the top priority of U.S. Federal Reserve. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell further said at a news conference following a Fed Pulse meeting that the central bank was ready to raise interest rate at its March 15th meeting and, and then could continue to lift them faster than it did during the past decade. To summarize his speech, uh, there will be a faster than expected interest rate hikes by, by U.S. Fed until the end of this year. Well, as you say, March is the time everyone's expecting for the rate hikes to begin. The question is how much at minimum 25 basis points, but with inflation so high, some are saying 50 basis points or more. What do you say, Professor? Uh, Devin, that's exactly what people asked Mr. Powell right after his speech, after FOMC meeting. But he said, I don't think it's uh, possible to say exactly how this is going to go which indicates Mr. Powell left the door open to raising rates at consecutive policy meetings, which are held roughly every six weeks. Uh, that is something the Fed hasn't done since 2006. Uh, when it is necessary to raise interest rate, U.S. Fed usually increases the rate by a quarter percent or 0.25 percent. But since uh, U.S. Fed acknowledges the urgent situation to tame inflation, there is a high possibility to raise the key interest rate by a half percent or 0.5 percent in March FOMC meeting. In addition, if inflation before the March FOMC meeting uh, in January and February are higher than 7 percent on year, it would be almost certain that Fed will raising the rate by a half percent in March. Well, uh, thinking about all that, we see investors uh, you know, see, selling their stocks, you know, which are way down from their recent highs. But the Fed's comments this time did not lead to a significant decline uh, in the overseas markets overnight. There was, however, a major decline here in Korea. The cost being now below 2,700 points for the first time since late 2020. What's the story in the global markets and here in Korea? 
What we know from our experiences and economic knowledge is that when the economy is bad, so is the stock market. But for the last two years of the coronavirus pandemic, the uh, stock market boomed, even with declining economy. The number one factor of this market boom is ample liquidity with zero uh, interest rate. Uh, therefore, U.S. Fed's interest, raise, interest rate raising uh, plan release is a shock to the market. Uh, Stocks sold off while Mr. Powell spoke yesterday, reversing big gains from earlier uh, in the day. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average finished it down 0.4 percent, while the, while the tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite ended almost flat. Domestic market literally collapsed today thanks to U.S. Fed's interest rate hikes uh, planned uh, from March. Kospi dropped by 3.5 uh, percent, and Costa also dropped. Uh, by 3.7% uh, in a single day. Uh, in the case of Kospi, uh, it has retreated over five straight days, including today. The accumulated return over five days is negative 7%, and this is the largest five-day drop after April of 2020. Right. Uh, a rough time right now in the Korean market. But apparently putting that aside, the Korean government is saying it does not expect the Fed's latest meeting to have a big impact on the financial markets here in Korea, but it will move to stabilize the market if need be. Tell us about those remarks and what kind of action might be needed. Well, it is true that there is a negative impact of higher interest rate on stock market, but in the longer run, market is more affected by the performance it performances of companies. So I think there is no reason for being so much panic as of now. Uh, Korean government assesses the Fed monetary policy stance as hawkish, but it said the outcome of the U.S. Central Bank's latest rate setting meeting is expected to have a limited impact on Korean market. Uh, also, Korean government says it will keep close tabs on uncertainty about the pace of the U.S. monetary tightening and global inflation risk. In addition, it, if needed, Korean government has plans to take measures to stabilize the country's financial market. It means that when, when domestic market interest rate increases higher than expected, the Bank of Korea needs to buy uh, government bonds to stabilize uh, market interest rate. Right. Interesting times right now. Professor, uh, thank you as always for sharing your insights with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.